Hey, fellas, you know the way they said 2020 couldn't get any worse? Well, they were wrong. I'm back, bitches. Now flee in terror. It's the second coming, but it's the second coming of the Antichrist. Because as we all know, as any true blue-blooded Englishman knows, the first Antichrist was the ogre of Corsica, Napoleon Bonaparte. Good day to you all, and welcome to Napoleon Total War. For those of you who are new to this, my name is Fred of Asgarnia. I mysteriously vanished off the face of the earth about, oh, it must be three, four years ago now. And this is my version of a, we'll put it this way. I want to say it's my version of Napoleon's return to continental Europe after a couple of months of exile on Elba. Uh, but we all know how that one ended, and praying God this won't end the same way. Namely, me getting my romp handed to me at a place called uh, Charleroi or Waterloo, and ending up on another island in the middle of the Atlantic. It's not like 2020 could get any worse after all, right? Well, as I said, I'm back. And honestly, the uh, reason is, uh, this is, I'll just I'll work away at this and talk you through my tragic life story. Last time, when I was here, I was kind of working at college. That was fine. Then I worked in the Students' Union for a year. That was also fine, but honestly, it was like pulling my hair out every other week. Honestly, I don't know how Napoleon did Europe, because I couldn't do a small MO. But that went well, too. And now, here I am, biding my time, looking for another job. But I also landed myself a decent PC, which affords me access to all the privileges I enjoyed three years ago. So, I said, really, this isn't going to be a full-time series by any measure. It's actually just going to be a way of... It's going to be a one-off thing, I think. Just to sort of ease myself back into the idea of Let's Play. Do, do they even call them that anymore? I think streaming's all the rage now. So, I'll talk you through Napoleon's Total War. As you can tell by all the illusions, this is a game about, yes, Napoleon Bonaparte and uh, the Napoleonic Wars. There's quite a few different ways to play it, as you can see. You have Napoleon's Campaign, which is probably, it's one of the earlier examples of a story-driven campaign in a Total War title. I mean, they've always done it, but I think this was one of the ways they did it best. Please excuse me, just one moment. My apologies. Now, as I was, as I was saying, Napoleon was an interesting title, because it was, I think, the second Total War title, which focused its entire sort of historical basis around a single historical figure. The first, and I might be misremembering, but as I recall, the first one was Total War Alexander, and that was an expansion pack to Rome Total War. This wasn't an expansion to its predecessor, Empire Total War, but rather a lot of people argued it ought to have been a standard, a standalone expansion. I don't think so, because, I don't know, it, it, it returns to the traditional Total War formula of just confining the field to Europe, but it also refines the mechanics somewhat and streamlines them. So as you can see, Napoleon's campaigns here deal with the tutorial, which is Napoleon's early days, the whiff of grape sharp days, where he put down the, um, uh, put down the, uh, what do you call it, put down a royalist revolt, won at the siege of Toulon, using artillery in support of inf infantry in support of artillery, as opposed to the other way around. That's an interesting case study right there. His early campaigns in Italy, Egypt, which I can't unlock until I play Italy, and then you've got Europe, which is basically a diet version of the Grand Campaign. Then, Napoleon's battles. You might as well call this historical battles. So, you've got Waterloo there, whereas you can play as the intrepid British or the perfidious French. Oh wait, no shit, I got that the wrong way around. Anyway, the Battle of Friedland, these were some DLC material. Lodi. Yeah, this is, you know, you can play some of the, you can play the big name battles of the Napoleonic Wars, which is very nice. Campaigns of the Coalition, what this is basically, it's the Grand Campaign. Uh, notably, as you'll see, you can't play France here, because this is the Campaign of the Coalition. These were the multiple nations that banded together seven times, if I recall, to bring down Napoleon. Spoiler, only really the last two succeeded. So you can play as any of the major nations, Austria, Britain, Prussia, or Russia. It's very simplified, but they were the big, I won't say the big three, but the big four. Uh, as I said, if you want to play Napoleon, y'all gotta do Napoleon's campaigns and win. And then finally, the Peninsula Campaign, which refers to Napoleon's running sore, uh, the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, he could never catch a break down there. So, here you can play as the armies of Britain, Spain, or France. 
France again, it's it's like the, the Western Roman Empire. It looks like you've got a lot to work with, but to be honest, it's more trouble than it's worth. Your armies are worn down, half your country is in disarray because the Spanish really didn't like being ruled by the French. Shocker. Uh, and then you've got the Portuguese pushing in on the Spanish, the Portuguese and the British pushing in on you on every side. So, of course, Wellington is involved in this. It's great. So, I hadn't really given this much thought, but I think I've got to kick off with one of Napoleon's campaigns. Just to dick around for a little bit. So, we'll go with the Italian campaign. The new revolutionary Republic of France is under threat from all the old reactionary nations of Europe. It is clear that there, is no other, there are no, other, no options other than war, and that the utter ruination of France is the only aim of Austria and France's other enemies. The Austrians are motivated by fear. They fear their own people will follow the same revolutionary path. This was true. One thing France was very good at during this period was exporting their ideals abroad, often at the point of a bayonet. And it was widely feared that other folks would join in revolutionary sentiments. It was a big fear in Britain at the time, but actually, in retrospect, given that a lot of the romantic poets at the time were raging against state censorship and suppression, uh, it is rather surprising it didn't go that way in some ways. You can blame the great British press for that not happening. Yep. I'm suggesting you thank the Daily Mail. Joke. So, the Austrians can be confronted in Germany and northern Italy. Austria's possessions in Italy are ready for liberation. <laughs> liberation. Right. Uh, whoever said the bloody liberating countries was a new thing. The other states of Italy bear, wa bear, bear watching, but should not be able to stand against the righteous anger of the French people. God, who wrote this? Did Kellyanne Conway write this? General Napoleon de Bonaparte, because Napoleon himself was not Napoleon, he was Napoleon because his, um, well, family were Corsican, actually. He only changed hand to France a little time before Napoleon was born. Is in charge of l'armée d'Italie's artillerie, has been imported to command the entire army. It is his duty to hold on to France's territory in the Italian peninsula. This is, however, an ambitious and skillful man, and he has plans to drive the Austrians out of Italy and back to the gates of Vienna. So, I'm going to keep the campaign and battle difficulty on normal. There is a function in this game called drop-in battles, which means that if you fight out an, enemy AI, an enemy's army, if there is someone else in the area, an actual human being connected to an actual computer in our actual world, they can drop in and command the enemy army, which is pretty innovative. So, without further ado, impossible is a word to be found only in the dictionary of fools. And God knows, Napoleon had plenty of quotes like that. He had some really punchy ones. Some of my favorite quotes of all time are Napoleonic ones. It's also worth pointing out as well, not just the gameplay is polished, but the actual visuals, the art style. This was really something Total War Games in this era exceeded in. But art style, music, they nailed it. Some men live a simple life, while others have a fire that threatens to engulf the world. I do not know when the fire in Napoleon first burned. Perhaps he had always had a destiny. But sometimes, destiny can use a little help, or even a revolution. I'd like a, slow, a small loan of a million revolutions. The old ways were drowned in a tide of blood. With a whiff of grape shot. A man could be whatever he wanted, if he could weather the storm. In 1796, Napoleon was sent to command the army of Italy. We knew that Austria would fight in Germany. We knew the Italian campaign had become pointless. Napoleon thought differently. That was his talent. I will lead you through the most fertile plains in the world. You will find there honor, glory, and riches, he told us. He had a great PR the team as well, by the way. But they didn't believe. They had long been without hope, without glory. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Napoleon, he was a great battlefield commander, but he was also very good at PR. With the majority of French forces engaging Austria in the Rhineland, you've been placed in command of the destitute Armée d'Italie near the French-Italian border. Faced with impending invasion from Austrian forces stationed in Italy, it is vital that you address your army's dire situation 
and secure a foothold in the region before setting your sights on Austria itself. Capture Klagenfurt, and your forces will have a clear path to Vienna. The stronghold of Mantua may prove to be a challenging obstacle, although its seizure is vital if you hope to weaken the Austrian position in Italy. You will also face resistance from Austria's coalition ally, the Kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia. Subjugating this nation, along with any other Italian states that stand in your way, will ensure you sufficient resources to crush the Austrians and overthrow the coalition once and for all. <clears throat> Note that she says THE coalition. THIS coalition. This was the, you know, it was rather like, allegedly, the first film that Sean B. never died in. Supposedly, the film was called The First of Many. Coalition. First of many. So, uh, mission issued. I'll take you through how the campaign works. All things considered, it's fairly similar to, um, pre to previous Total War titles, but occasionally you're issued missions. Missions? Well, they're usually just ways of guiding you through a campaign. Uh, so, march on Vienna. We have to capture Klagen first. Take it off the Austrians. Uh, now that you assume command of L'Armée d'Italie, you must prepare for the invasion of Austria. As we speak, our forces in the Rhineland are readying to advance into the Tyrol. If we are to have any hope of seizing Vienna, we must be in a position to support our forces when the time comes. To this end, we have been charged by Le Dretois to invade uh, Carinthia and capture Klagenfurt, from whence we will be able to stage our glorious march on Vienna. Now, oh, it doesn't sound so bad. No, there's just about 15 Austrian armies between us and Klagenfurt. For, for. So, yeah, that's the thing. These... Kindly shut up, I've played this game before. So, we'll take you through. First, we have government. The government details panel oh, God. Together essential statistics Can it? Information. So, it shows who our, um, it basically, it shows our government. So, this is our faction leader, the director, Louis Le Revelier Lepo. Uh, as you can see, the breakdown of the treasury, the style of government, Catholicism, our religion. These are sort of things that would affect your diplomatic standing with other nations. Now, practically, that doesn't really matter here at the moment, because our business, as you know, is fighting. Fighting the Germans. No, not this time. The Germ- yes, the Germans and Italians, and anybody else that wants to fight. This refers to our income. Now, grand policy making doesn't matter so much in these smaller campaigns. Your economy, it takes a backseat. Warfare, fighting, that's your primary objective. This panel enables you to Can it? Okay, so as you can see here, you've got diplomatic breakdown, and no one really likes us. Kelsey Breeze. So I don't think there's any point making overtures to anybody just yet, but it might be worth it later. Building browser, it's all the stuff we can make. Again, a lot of this administrative stuff takes backseat in the early campaign, simply because it is what it is. I'll upgrade the roads because that's an... Okay, I'm going to shut this woman up once and for all. My head cannon is she was guillotined. Uh, crimes against the people. Uh, let's see. Game settings. Uh, show CPU moves. That's never a bad idea. Campaign advice. Get rid of it. Kindly, please, and thank you. And no limit to battles. That's just cheap. Okay. So, now that um, our advisor has been silenced for crimes against the people, we can proceed to go about managing our nation. So, as you can see here in Nice, we have a few different options. We could build a magistrate here for 1,500 quid. That actually increases repression, thus increasing public order. This is a French city, so it shouldn't be too hard to maintain order here. However, it also gives us a tax bonus. And new units. Militia and the National Guard. National Guard are basically militia units. Uh, men armed, basically trained, but the National Guard are French. Which means that they have a lot more passion than the others. Recruitment. Now, this is an interesting one. We've got a good lineup here, Fusiliers of the Line. These are basic line infantry, the mainstays of most of your armies. Um, passable attack, passable, you know, they have passable range. They're pretty average, but hey, they're, they're what you want. Uh, the National Guard and, uh, well, Revolutionary Infantry? I don't remember these fellas. Right, so they're line infantry, just slightly worse. Anything with Revolutionary in it usually is. But I'd say the morale is higher as a payoff. Six morale. Six morale. Why on earth would you bother? Are they cheaper? Is that a 12? Yeah, they're, they're 50 gold cheaper. So, I mean, you're strapped for cash, I guess. 
uh, National Guard. So as you can see, they're slightly better militia. So, what do we do from here? Well, I suppose the first thing we want to do is try and put Piedimont and Sardinia out of the war. Uh, Turin might be a good choice for that. If we can make peace with them, we can free up our forces to actually start fighting the Austrians. So let's see what our neighbours have got over here. They're happy enough. It's down to repression. What's their army looking like? Hmm, we don't know. Oh, you've also got market towns here. This can be helpful. They actually add wealth to the region and they increase tradable goods. Or at least that used to be the way it was. So, with that in mind, that works out quite well. Because once we start getting trade partners, we'll start making more money. But to get trade partners, um, well, we need to make peace with our enemies by going to war with them. So, Jean Surinet, not doing too bad. Got some, some line infantry. We also have guns, cannons. Uh, then we have, ah, Marshal Messina. He'll be important later. One moment. Now, I think what we might do is get a few units of line infantry going, along with a unit of cavalry. It sounds a little bit extra, but they do give you a decisive advantage going forward. In the meantime, I'm going to move Monsieur Bonaparte up and see what's ahead here. Now, could go for Genoa, put him out of the war, it's a seaside town, might do us some good, but I'm gonna hold off, I don't like the idea of an Austrian general floating around in my rear. So I'm gonna send Surye in first to Kunko, or Cori, whatever it is. We could probably attack immediately. Let's see. They've got a lot of armed citizenry. These are basically guys with firelocks shoved into their hands, they're not particularly good. They have a unit of line infantry, which we can manage, and a unit of militia. By comparison, we've got, yeah, we can do this, probably. The one thing we might want to get rid of, though, is the artillery. We are completely outclassed on that front. So I'm going to continue the siege, and I'll send up support then, maybe in the next few turns. As for General Bonaparte, you're going to fly in and you're going to attack this guy. As I said, I don't like the idea of an Austrian running around in my rear. Napoleon's army, as befits Napoleon, he's got some dragoons, heavy cavalry, some decent artillery, a unit of grenadiers de la ligne, grenadiers, marvellous troops, along with Isom line infantry and some militia. So what I'll do is I'll fight this battle out, quick save in case everything goes pear-shaped, and then I'll cut the recording. This is just a way of getting it started. So, the Battle of Liguria, 1796. I must study politics and war, that my sons may have liberty to study maths and philosophy. Well. Pity we took all of those things off the curriculum, barring maths. Okay, so this will get to show off the first proper battle of the campaign. This shouldn't be a tricky one. From what I can see, not only do we outnumber the Austrians, we also outclass them. So this is, as I said, this whole experience is just a way of me trying to get back into the game. Let's playing, really, as I said, do we even call it that anymore? And look, if you enjoyed this, feel free to let me know, and I may consider doing more. So let's have a look. What have the Austrians got? Diddly squad is what they got. Okay, so Dragoons, Artillery... Right. Well, I suppose the first thing we'll do is group our Artillery and line them up on the hill. Can we get you maybe somewhere over here? That would be nice. So the one thing I suppose we want is to be able to just constantly ha be able... We want to be able to hammer them from any angle. Here might be a good one because I think we're slightly out of range of their own artillery, but then there's a slight incline here. I don't know. We'll try that. What's the worst that can happen? It all goes pear-shaped. Alright, so we'll move the artillery up here and limber it. So, now we have a clear field of fire. So that works, that works for me. And straighten them up a little. There we go, some infilating fire. They won't know what hit them. Um, okay, I'm gonna withdraw my line a little. I don't think there's any guarantee they're actually going to advance on me. Oh, my bloody luck they weren't, they won't. I'd like it if they did, but let's face it, they're not gonna do that. Uh, Bonaparte to the rear, and I'm satisfied with that. 
like honestly there is not much I can do here right so let's see what the um, let's see what the Austrians do oh excellent my artillery is already in range of theirs so the first thing I'm gonna do is target their artillery if I can put them out of commission early we'll be doing well what I might then do as well just pull my men back a little to the tree line it's not retreating, or it's not running away, it's a tactical retreat. Yep, that's the line. Marvellous. This is working really well. I always did love playing around with artillery in this. Uh, let's see, so what have we got here? The line's retreating, uh, sorry, not retreating, withdrawing. Uh, pull you back over here, just to support the line. This is one thing Wellington was fond of doing, he did it at Waterloo. Uh, pulling his men back to the reverse slope, which protected them from artillery fire. It doesn't seem as though our lads are, or these lads are particularly clever, or they might consider doing the same thing. Right now, we're just chewing them up. What I am tempted to do is send my dragoons around and see if I can put their artillery out of commission, but the problem with that is, well, yeah, they're too well guarded. Or I could just straight up send my men on them. Doesn't seem like it'd be a big problem. Hi, this is looking well. Although we still haven't killed a single one of them. So I'm just going to start pasting their infantry. And then maybe start advancing my men on them. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, please keep doing what you're doing. Alright, hold your fire. I'm going to let them come right at us. Nope. Oh, you're way too sensible. Oh, sh... Well, I'll be... Hit them hard. What I was going to do was let them come at us. If they did that, we could eviscerate them with canister shots. they came closer. And I kind of still want that. So just keep coming. And then we'll load with canister at the last minute. Not that it mattered, we killed him anyway. Alright, that worked out well. Didn't actually have to do anything. And what that does then, it frees up their flank. So, while they're doing, now that they've wasted their cavalry, uh, we can start moving up the men. Artillery doesn't seem to have taken any casualties, so we'll just keep pounding them. Their dragoons have broken, and with their cavalry out of the way, the cavalry out of the way, it now means that we can move our cavalry to knock out their artillery. And by knocking out the artillery, we're just going to throw them into a world hurt. They do have their general, but generals shouldn't be able to stand up to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these fellas up as well. I mean, what could go wrong, right? It's my story, I'm sticking to it. And then straight at the artillery. I mean, this, is a pretty been, this has been a pretty sedate battle so far. I mean, honestly, I've had much worse than this. Uh, let's see, their general staff is only 18 men. Yeah, our dragoons outnumber them considerably anyway. So if we just keep hammering them, we're probably going to win this by default. Jesus, stop firing. I said put a warning shot across our nose, not up it. Okay, so now we'll just take on these, these guns, put them out of commission, and then hopefully take the general with them. Who knows? Okay. Halt and make ready. Form a thin red line. Yep. Jesus, the general hasn't even tried to help. Oh, there he is. Now he's in. Although I reckon our dragoons should have this. General staff are strong, but there's only, what? There's 44 of us and only 18 of them. Okay, give them hell. Pound them. They, they won't hold. I'm sure of it. Okay, I think we have this. 34. Their general's holding. Oh god, he's only lost 5. We've lost most of the regiment. I'm still not too worried. The battle proper is going just fine. I hope. Okay, you lost. Uh, cease firing for the minute. Okay, Dragoons retire, and pull the Dragoons back, 
and then set the artillery to pounding the general. Which sounded kind of strange now that I say it. Now, one thing grenadiers can do is they can lob grenades, which is exactly what we're going to get them to do. They can throw these primitive grenades, they cause huge damage to morale, and they make big explosions. I'm all for this. So, just fire some grenades in there. Oh, nice, we got a lucky shot on the general, which actually just destroys the Austrian army. Happy days. Alright, so what we'll do now is we'll call the artillery to cease fire, because they're probably only going to kill one of ours. Um, we'll send the dragoons in to go after what's left of the Landwehr, although, to be honest, actually... You know what, now that I think about it, just charge bayonets. One of the great strengths of Grenadiers is actually that their melee state stats are actually much better than your average uh, infantry, uh, line infantry. So, they're good for that. So, throw the heavy cavalry in, support them with the charge from the Grenadiers, and that should be your lot. Can't believe I accidentally shot the general. Well, you know, can we really call it an accident? It wasn't an accident. Okay, we'll continue the battle just so that we can chase down the um, what's left of the Fusiliers. The land there are militia, if I remember, so they're not a big deal. And plus, the general's dead. We've basically wiped out the army, so I'm not too worried. Just want to polish off what's left of these German Fusiliers, because they could pose problems down the line. So, heavy cavalry, too. Their main strength is kind of fighting other cavalry and infantry, if they can be caught out of the line. Stop firing at will, you will kill our own men. Particularly if any of them happen to be called Will. Poor Will. Totally discriminated against. I should have said that the pathfinding in this game is actually slightly abysmal, but anyway, we'll quit the battle. We've won it. You call it a close victory, but we won. Yeah, I know, it was still pretty close. As I said, to be honest, I know I'm, I was never brilliant at this game to begin with, but I also have not played this game in... Four years. So, go easy on me. I'm going to make mistakes. But to be honest, I would say... Oh my god, 66, 69. Nice. Um, I would say 64 losses for the elimination of an Austrian army is pretty good. Okay, so, we actually just got an air mission issued. A matter of supply. So, we need to build a supply post if we're to drive through Austria. Now, how do we do that? And the march on Vienna. That's Klagenfurt. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so what I might do then is, I don't really know what the situation with this is, Genoa. What I might do is, um, okay, we'll hold it for there. We'll continue the siege, continue training troops here, and maybe then I'll join those men to Napoleon's, or maybe, I think actually if I take out Turin, I force a peace. So it might make sense just to keep advancing north with Napoleon, and hopefully then we can converge on Torino and put the Sardinians out of the war, which would work for everyone, except the Austrians, but, you know, we're French and we're ticking off the Germans. And, you know, I'm an Anglo over here, so you could argue that ticking off Germans is something I'm meant to be quite good at. Not gonna lie, though, I love the Germans. But, right, I think that's enough. So, thank you for tuning in. I hope this hasn't proven to be an altogether traumatizing experience. Uh, especially given that, plus, I'm terrible at this game because I haven't played it in a long time, and because you're listening to me, as I said. As if 2020 couldn't get any worse. Well, bitch, it did. It got much worse. I returned. It truly is a sign of the end times. Uh, so, this has been Fred of Asgarnia, insane as always, and I am signing off. Toodaloo.